Large whirlpools suddenly appear and disappear. It's potholes for boats here. Wild stuff. Go to the whirlpool. I said, hang on, I'm hanging on to the cameraman. He's nearly losing over the side. <laughs> hmm, there's a pesky little problem still back at the boat. This guy's eyes are bigger than his belly and he thinks we're dinner. Every time we near the bank, he comes at us. You cheeky little bastard. You cheeky little croc. Hey, old mate, we're not wallabies. Back off. Boat's out there. Croc there. What are we going to do? We get this rope. We need to get out of here to make the tide. So we've got to take a risk. All right, this is just pulling up to the fueling barge here at Dogleg Creek. So we desperately need some fuel. With our tanks full, we go in search of the Coffee Royale site. I've got a feeling there'll be a few challenges along the way. We've just come through the mouth of the Sale River here, and we've had to get across Doubtful Bay. And there's this big island called Steep Island, and it rises up out of the water 150 metres straight up. Spectacular sight. The reason why we're going to the Sale River is we're on our way to Coffee Royale, but I checked the tides and we're not going to make the incoming tide. 11 metre tides around here, which means the tide is king. We're governed by the tides every section of the way. So I want to wait till tomorrow, a bit earlier, a bit more organised, and we're going to go in with the push, the pushing in of the tide. Because if we make a mistake here, things could turn ugly really quickly. So I want to time it just right. This is some of the most hazardous navigational waterways in the Kimberley region. The chart even says unsurveyed. So everything's going to have to be done by feel and by sight. But the Sale River is not going to be too shabby. It's one of the most picturesque rivers in the Kimberley region and there's a rock bar at the end of it and hopefully some barramundi. Now it's about to get serious in these risky, unpredictable waters. And we're just about coming into the rock bar region. There's a couple of different levels of rock bar rock bars in here, a couple of different pools, and we're just trying to push over into the top one. And if we can get into there, then we've got a safe anchorage. So you brought me up here in the tides, mate, into this little rock pool of yours. Are we going to catch fish up here, mate? Maybe. Maybe. It's all up to you now. But the only way out is on high tide, and that's tonight, at roughly at about midnight. So we're going to have to run with the tide tonight. And like I keep saying, this place runs on the tide, and it waits for no man. Got me missing out on my sleep, running down the river at midnight. There better be some good fish. You're about to get to the very end, very shortly. Is that it there? It's around the corner, it certainly is. Unless the boat can fly, we're not getting up there. Is that a rock there? Yeah, there's a rock to the port. So we're just gonna drop that anchor down? Yep. See what happens. When you get these big tides in the Kimberley, you gotta be really careful about these rock bars when you anchor your boat. A lot of boats have come unstuck because the tide's dropped away, especially aluminium boats. They get caught up on the rock and they'll grip on that rock and lock in. And then as the tide comes back in, it'll just swamp the boat. So you gotta be extremely careful. What we've done is we've set it up so we can pull the boat either side. So we've got a rope that can pull through a ring on both sides and then that way we can pull the boat out into the centre, away from the rocks that where it gets hung up or caught. And then that way we don't get swamped here in the middle of nowhere. And There's not a lot of help out here and that's what you've got to think about. Fingers crossed, our preparation will keep us out of trouble. And with our boat anchored, our 12-hour fishing stopover begins. And how's this for stunning? The Sail River in all its glory. A pity the fishing's not quite up to scratch. At least not in the salt water part. We decide to head where it turns into fresh. Hopefully, 
will have better luck. A bit more promise in here, buddy. Oh yeah! Fish on. Hey, you're right. The fat one. He's a little fat sucker. Black brim, apparently. My well, first one. It's a big one for a while, then they tell me. Take Jason's word for that. It's all about how you retrieve your lure. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, is that right? <laughs> is that right? <laughs> you want me to give you a few pointers? Yeah, yeah, you do. Little Jack. Jaggy. Little mangrove Jack in the fresh. The fishing's pretty ordinary, so we head back for a feed and to check the boat. While Simon's enjoying a bath, I've got something really cool and potentially life-saving to show you. The thing about places like this, it's pretty special. Like this rock bar here in the Kimberley. But when you sit down in the afternoon, pull up the swag, it's always absolutely awesome to have a fire. Mate, I love having a fire. So I get a fire, but the thing about getting a fire is getting a fire going. And I found this little thing, and this, this little thing here is a big chunk of aluminium. Now, I can actually start a fire using shaved aluminium. So, sounds a bit weird, but check this out. So what I'll do is I'll actually shave aluminium in a little pile, and then I'll use the flint here on the back side to start it. Sounds cool? I'll show you. So what I'll do first is I'll get a pile of shaved aluminium. All right, there we go. I've got a pile of shaved aluminium there. Now I'm gonna take this over to here, into my grass, a little bit of dry grass going on here. I'm gonna put that in the middle of my dry grass. All right, and I'm gonna light it up using this flint here. All right, here we go. There it goes. It's a handy tool to have in your backpack, and that can get absolutely saturated in water. And as long as you got some dry timber and tinder, you can start a fire. Good survival tool. The sun goes down and the barra start hitting on the surface as they feed. Good news for us, that was a little barra. And there we go. Assistance pays off. Bring him over the rocks. We'll get ourselves <laughs> a nice little barra. I think we're just waiting for that tide to push in. I think that's what might stir him up a bit. But in the meantime, this little tacker here has taken my lure. And with the moon coming up just over there, couldn't be any better. <laughs> with at least one good fish, it's a waiting game for the tide to arrive to take us out. It's going to be tricky, and I suggest that running around here at night is for experienced skippers only. Well, she's pretty close to midnight now, and that tide's just come in at a hell of a rate of knots and filled up the gorge, and we're out of here. Now, I've just got to be a little bit careful now to make sure I don't pick up any of these little boulders sitting on the bottom. And we'll sneak out of here. Sitting up on the roof here, a good vantage point to see the rocks. Cruising down this creek Simon. in the middle of the night. Yo, hey. you reckon you can adjust that light up? That rest for wicked. I think it's got to go up a touch. Sleeping like Abby? Yeah, that's pretty good there. Who doesn't have a 20 inch light bar on the roof of their boat? I'll just run the same course back now. You see where you're going now, mate? Yep. So, by the time we get out to the, to the river mouth, it's going to be pretty late. We'll get a couple of hours sleep, and then we can head up start heading up the Glenelg River. And I'm sure, I'm sure old Smithy and his crew 
would have been going through the same sort of thing, having a few late nights, not much sleep. In the middle of those sand flats there, at the top of the Glenelg River. Well, safely made the run out to the river mouth. Now it's time for a bit of shut eye. I reckon Simon's got the picket spots. Hey guys, today's video is brought to you by the new product from Campos 4x4. Now it's called the Nudie Boss Shower Tent and it's designed to be convenient and easy to pack up and set up and have a private area where you can get dressed, changed, have a shower, go to the toilet, whatever you want to do. It's awesome, it's easy, check this out. How cool is that? Simple as that guys. So inside, if you have a quick look, you'll notice there is, there's a couple of uh, pouches here to store some stuff, your shower gel or whatever. Up here, have a look at this. So that's where the shower head will come through. Comes with a light. Have a look here. So the switching of the light, we've got white and orange. And this is pretty cool as well. I can put the roof in. A Couple of Velcro clips. And I've got a private place where I can Either go to the toilet, I can do a, have a shower, all those sorts of things. There she is, guys, the nudie boss. Now, if you get a chance, go on to Camp Boss 4x4 shop online or check out your local Camp Boss 4x4 dealer. Anyway, back to the adventure. We're heading for the famous site, Coffee Royal, where Sir Charles Kingford Smith, or Smithy, and his crew had to make an emergency landing in the Southern Cross and waited nearly a fortnight to be rescued. It's a very difficult site to access. Starting to crank in now, mate. All right. We've got a long way to go yet. We've started our run up the uncharted George Waters, heading for the Glenelg River. And I can see why Dick Smith used a chopper back in 1981. These waters are treacherous, with huge swells surging up and down. Water banks around corners like a speedway track. Large whirlpools suddenly appear and disappear. It's potholes for boats here. Wild stuff. Go to the whirlpool. How good was that? That's just mad. Crazy, mate, crazy. That's some crazy water going through there. <laughs> I'm hanging on to the cameraman, you can nearly lose me over the side. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> just trying to keep it out of the whirlpool. I hit a whirlpool and just hit the gas. Try and push through it. Because it can throw you sideways and tip your boat. Tip your boat on its side. There's this narrow entrance here that funnels all the water through. That's what creates all the turbulent water. We've got ourselves through the worst of it now. Now we're heading up the main river, the main river system, up to the top. And it's on this big sharp loop and bend. And that's where I think we can make landfall and travel out across the sand flats or the salt pans to try and get to this location. We're going to get as close as we can by boat to the Coffee Royal site. Now you might be wondering about that name. After Smithy and his crew had to land here in 1929, they survived on baby food they were dropping off and a few mouldy sandwiches. They also had coffee and some brandy from the first aid kit, which they mixed together. They called it Coffee Royal and the name stuck. That bank, those banks are looking pretty steep and that mud's gonna be thick, that's gonna be knee deep, that stuff. Those mangroves are pretty thick too. Yeah, you're gonna have to find a gap in the mangroves. Yeah, look at you right the tree in the back. There you go, we got that tree line in the mountain range, little mountain or hill in the background. That's us. Perfect, that's that it. That tide's bucking it in now, eh? Yeah. We're gonna be critical how we anchor this boat. Mate, am I gonna get my feet dirty? You're definitely going to get your feet dirty in that stuff. Let's have a look about it. There could be crocodiles in there. 
Yeah, speaking of crocs, one of them's going to cause us a bit of grief later on. All right, see how she sits, eh? Just run it up to that solid tree there, be fine. Look at the cheeky little bugger. See? Who was going to swim to the boat? You. Oh, bugger. He's only a little one. Come to see what all the commotion's about. Pretty much. Free of the bog. Well, that's hopefully that's the hardest part. I've got to be careful with that boat and make sure that that boat is set up properly. There's old mate sitting down there. He's only a little fella. But where's the big fella? He's sitting there waiting for us. So I don't want to have to swim to this boat. All right, mate. Let's go for a trek. Let's go. Smithy and his crew lost their aerial over Richmond near Sydney and couldn't receive warnings of the approaching storms up ahead. They were blown off course, unable to navigate in the storm and running low on fuel made a forced landing here. Unfortunately, one search plane, the Kookaburra, was lost and two of Smithy's close friends looking for him died of thirst in the Tanami Desert. But eventually the Southern Cross crew were rescued. Captain Les Holden in the Canberra spotted the plane. These photos were taken and they returned the next day with fuel. Remember, these men were national heroes back in 1929 and the whole country was waiting to hear the news about them. How long were these boys stuck out here for, mate? I think it might have been eight, eight days or something like that. They were stuck out here. Did you get a test job? Yeah, a bit of time. The thing, I think the thing about survival is um, it's not, it's how long you think you're gonna be there. Mm. Because on the first day, you might get, think you're getting rescued tomorrow, don't you? That's it. And by the 10th day, you might think you're getting rescued <laughs> in a month. <laughs> what time of year was it? I was stuck here. Check out where we're heading in the right direction, eh? Yeah. You're walking all this way going the wrong way. Uh, I got it covered, mate. And it looks like, see that creek? Looks like there's fresh water coming down through there. The sense of anticipation is growing as we near Coffee Royal. Around here in 1981, Dick Smith's expedition found bullet casings, which fitted the story that the lost men tried to shoot birds for food. They also found some copper wire entwined in the rock, which would have come from the Southern Cross's emergency aerial. May 1981. Well, here it is. This is the plaque that Dick Smith and his Coffee Royal Expedition placed back in 1981, some 33 years ago. And it reads, at this location in April 1929, Charles Kingford Smith and his crew awaited rescue. Their aircraft, the Southern Cross was forced to land here after 28 hours in the air during an attempt to fly from Sydney to Wyndham. Now, the reason why Dick came here was to prove Smithy right. Now, back in 19, April 1929, a journalist put out a story to say that this was a publicity stunt for when he was trying to circumnavigate the world and break the record. But well, we're going to get hold of, I think we'll get the satellite phone out and we'll get hold of Dick Smith and we'll have a quick yarn with him and see what he reckons. Hey, Dick Smith. Yeah, Dick, it's uh, J Jason here from All For Adventure and Simon, how you going, mate? Good, thank you. Awesome, mate, we found your plaque, Coffee Royale. Oh, this is wonderful, good on you. Yeah, it's still there, it's still there, mate. Just like the day you left it about 33 years ago. Yeah, I was there a couple of years ago. I had a look at it a couple of years ago. That's why I said it needs a bit of sandpaper on the front of it because it had a bit of corrosion. Yeah, yeah, no, she's looking a bit corroded at the moment. Did you notice there was another plaque here? No, no, what does the other plaque say? Oh, what, can you get a photo, photograph of it and send it to me? Yeah, we'll send you a photograph of that one. Well, you've done a good job, mate, and... Um, if you hadn't had a crack at it, then it probably would have been lost in history. Yeah, that's right. Well, I'm glad I found the exact location. Well, that's really good. Okay, bye-bye. All right, th thanks, mate. See ya. 
you reckon, mate? We're trying to give a bit of a stand up. So we do as Dick asks and spruce up his plaque with a sandbag. Oh, look at that. You can almost see the brass in it. She'll be right for another 30 years now. After we shot this, we managed to track down the old bloke who laid this other plaque in 2006. Jack Evans is 82 years old, and amazingly, he actually flew the Southern Cross in 1946. A piece of living history. We leave Coffee Royal feeling satisfied with that mission accomplished. But we have to get out of here quick, or we'll be stuck for another 24 hours. Hmm, there's a pesky little problem still back at the boat. This guy's eyes are bigger than his belly and he thinks we're dinner. Every time we near the bank, he comes at us. You cheeky little bastard. You cheeky little croc. Hey, old mate, we're not wallabies. Back off. Boat's out there. Croc there. What are we going to do? We can get this rope up. We need to get out of here to make the tide. So we've got to take a risk. All right, this one. Time for some strategy. We split up to distract the croc, then it's game on. I can't see where he's going, Simon. Mission accomplished! On the boat. You're on the boat. That must be breaking a world record for a three metre swim. There we find a safer spot for the crew to board and keep an eye out for old mate. That was a bit of a mish, mate. Yeah, well, that was a potential for disaster right there and then, eh? Little croc hanging around. What happens is that croc's like that, he's probably never seen a boat before, being that sort of size. He wasn't scared of us one little bit. No, he, wasn't get, he was not scared of us at all, so probably never seen blokes like us before, that's for sure. Definitely not blokes like you. <laughs> all right, anyway, let's get the hell out of here. One me, Norman. And uh, this tide's racing out. So we're going to follow it out, and that way we'll take it easy. Well, easier anyway. So we head back out to the mouth of Doubtful Bay and start to work our way back to Derby. Introducing the home of Australian adventure. Unleashed TV. A growing library of content featuring the best of four-wheel driving, <laughs> fishing, Touring, rig built, bush cooking, and whatever you call this. Hope the airbags take up. Stream entire seasons of the hit TV show All for Adventure. Get me out of here, boys. Water's coming in. Unleashed. Oh, that's tight. And more original series from Jason the team. In this mini series, we're going to be exploring some of the most remote coastlines. Plus, get fresh new content exclusive to Unleashed TV subscribers. Snap is mate, this is all going on down here. You it? can stream it all for just $9.99 per month. Yeah! That's why Unleashed TV oh, yeah. is the home of Australian adventure. Oh yeah!